Over the past week, we've seen two buildings go up in flames. One in Dalian, China. And one in Milan in Italy. Both bring up dreadful memories that happened in the UK at Grenfell Towers. These were the unbearable scenes in West London as people living in the flats realised what was happening to them. As the fire raced uncontrollably up the high-rise building... It does bring up an important issue that anyone involved with the construction industry could know, as it's not just localised to one area, but it's a worldwide problem. When we look at Grenfell Tower and these other buildings, they suffer from the same issue, and this is the flammable external cladding. So when you're looking at the building on the outside, it's made up of these nice aluminium sandwich panels. So there are two sheets of aluminium with a filler material inside. Now there's two forms of this type of product that you can buy. You can either buy a more expensive one that is not flammable or the cheaper one, which potentially can be flammable. So what happens when it heats up? You heat up the aluminium sheet over time and it starts to delaminate, exposing the material that's inside the product. And when that product has a constant high temperature applied to it, it can potentially liquefy and turn into more of a gasoline, fueling the fire that it's meant to suppress. So you get these big fireballs of buildings, like in the past week, where the whole building catches fire. And unfortunately, there's quite a lot of buildings around the world that is not just associated with these specific locations. We even had buildings in Australia that have caught fire from the similar material. On Spencer Street in Melbourne CBD, firefighters say that the blaze took hold on a 22nd floor balcony of the building. About 80 firefighters were called to this blaze early this morning. And my understanding is that the, uh, the building is uh, cladded with uh, ACM, aluminium composite material, so the sort of cladding that was on the Glenfall Tower. And unfortunately, when we're looking at the building from the outside, there's no way of telling whether you have the non-flammable or the flammable cladding on your building. As they both look very similar, it's only the central core that's different. So the only way to find out whether you do or do not have a problem is to take the cladding on from the outside, test it, and then replace it if it is the wrong kind. It also brings the importance in of what structural engineers need to consider when they're designing their building. As we need to make sure our building is safe for such events, as we do not want those buildings to fall down. As we've seen in Milan, or even in China, these buildings were specifically designed as little fire compartments. So it gave people time to escape the building before the building burnt down and allowed firefighters to put out the building before it became overly damaging. Don't forget to smother that fire by clicking the like button. Not only does it help me out, but it also gets this type of content out to more people. So it means as structural engineers, we need to have those considerations to ensure that the building has a sufficient integrity under a fire condition. So what does that mean? So when we're looking at the fire design, is there's certain things that we need to watch out for. When we're talking about floor structures, it's primarily around the column and in the punching sear zone. So if you're looking at the changes to the Australian standards recently, the critical zone is around the column in that punching shear location, where you've typically got the highest shear stresses. So when you think about the middle points of the slab, where you've got the flexural design, you can have the fire either on the bottom or the top and have the loads redistribute from different locations. However, in the punching sear zone, there's really nowhere for it to go. It needs to get to that column. This is where we've got minimum integrity depths that we need to have in those locations and also minimum depths to the height of your reinforcement. As if you're trying to maintain a certain fire rating, it's the amount of time from the fire underneath for it to propagate through the concrete structure and heat up the steel underneath. That is the biggest problem. So when the steel heats up, it potentially expands causing the concrete to spall and also degrades the strength of the steel. Something that also needs to be considered is the grade of your concrete. See, so the higher the grade of your concrete, which is maybe somewhat counterintuitive, the less fire protection that you actually have. You see, they'll be more susceptible to spalling under 80 or 100 MPa concrete than if you had a 50 MPa concrete. Yes, it is also still relative to the stress that you have in the element, as the higher the stress is, the more residual capacity it needs to be able to support. However, the higher strength concretes will spall at a lower temperature. There is some ways that we can get around that. So if we've got mission critical areas that we need to consider. We can put fiber reinforcement in those areas, especially on the around the outside. And this significantly improves the fire rating of the higher strength materials. The other area is specifically columns. 
And this is more around limiting the stress under a realistic loading. So making sure that the column is not overly stressed. So sometimes you may need to size up the support elements such as walls or columns to be able to support the loads. And also making sure that you've got the critical depth off the face. As we were saying earlier, it's about the fire on the outside and the time it takes to progress to the steel that will slowly degrade the strength of your structure. By having a bigger depth from the face of your structure to the steel, the more fire protection you have. But then again, it also does the opposite. The more likely you are to get surface cracking, and also it degrades the strength as you do not have as great a lever arm to the tensile reinforcement. If you're interested in supporting the channel, I've got links to my Patreon in the below description. Like these many members here that have helped support the channel making this type of content possible. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next week.